Hi, it's Nikki here and welcome to another video. I actually recorded this painting ages ago because it was a piece that I made for Lunar New Year but didn't get around to actually editing it until now which is kind of classic me at the minute. I thought it might be about time for me to talk about something that I actually get asked about fairly frequently considering how small of an artist I am, how I found my art style. I was going to do more of an advice in inverted commas video about it, um, but then I realised that I don't actually know what I'm talking about and I have no authority to be giving proper advice, so I thought what might be more useful is if I share my art journey and how I found my art style, so far that is, I don't consider myself to have actually found it yet, still in the process, um, in the hopes that it might be of some use to someone somewhere. So here we go. So I started out drawing people, started drawing Sailor Moon when I was a kid and basically didn't stop until <laughs> until like a few years ago. In fact, when I was at sixth form, I wanted to be a portrait artist, that's what I wanted to do, and I only ever drew or painted human faces, crucially not bodies, because I was bad at it and couldn't be asked, which is really stupid, and because I'm just the kind of person that's like, if I can't do it, I don't want to try, <laughs> which is my toxic trait, for sure. And then after uni, which is a totally separate story that I'd like to make a video about another time, I was heavily influenced by artists like Audra or Claire and Jacqueline de Leon, and at that point I almost exclusively drew pin-up illustrations of beautiful alt-style women complete with tattoos and piercings and all that good stuff. And at this point I was struggling and struggling to just try and be as good as these artists, and I was using gouache and watercolour at this point and spending absolutely ages and ages on paintings and drawings that I honestly didn't really like. At this point I was thinking about giving up drawing and painting because I just really wasn't happy with it and I think what I then realised that the reason why I wasn't happy was because I wasn't enjoying what I was drawing because it didn't really mean anything to me. Like sure, alt style girls are really nice to look at but like I wasn't saying anything with my art, I didn't really care about the things I was drawing. And actually at the time, in an effort to diversify my drawing skills, I'd been drawing more animals and plants and I'd actually really been enjoying that way more so I was like maybe I'll draw animals and plants now and I'd recently gone vegan and I was really interested in environmentalism and wildlife conservation so it really made sense that that was a thing that I enjoyed drawing more because that was something that meant a lot more to me and since then I've really only drawn animals and flowers and I'm much much happier drawing that than I ever was just drawing pretty all girls. So all this is to say that for me the key to finding out what you like to draw is to basically draw everything and then when you find the thing that you like to draw just draw that. There's a lot to be said for if you don't like drawing something or you can't draw something that you should still try and do it and get good at it and like I mean yeah I guess but in my opinion life's too short for that and I really don't have time to be drawing spaceships which is something that I am not at all interested in drawing. <laughs> So after I'd sort of niche down I guess into animal slash plants drawing, I decided that what I was also going to do is restrict the colour palette that I was going to use moving forward. For the record I chose pink, yellow and green. I did this as kind of a way of taking that decision out of each piece and saving time ultimately on the actual creation of the art so that I wasn't like sat there for 20 minutes being like what colours should I use this time? It was actually quite a good way of saving a little bit of money because it meant that I could just buy a small handful of pencils in the colours that I'd chosen. I think I ended up buying like two different shades of each colour and then like a white and like a really dark liner colour. So I could save a little bit of money and just make quite quick art. I think also at this point I was going to attempt to draw like every day for a year but quickly realised that that wasn't going to be realistic at all because I worked a full-time job. But this is why I picked markers as a medium because they're really easy to just pick up and lay down flat colour in a couple of minutes and you don't have to wait for them to dry. I've since kind of stopped using markers because it's just plastic waste. I talk about it a little bit more in my sketchbook video so if you're interested in my opinions on that then go check that out. 
But yeah, I would definitely recommend if you're just starting off to use a limited color palette because it means that you can really quickly establish a visual style and it's cheaper, like I mentioned. Ultimately for me, it just takes a little bit of the brain work out of making a drawing if I already know what colors I'm gonna use. And this is really cool actually. I've also had people tell me that they think that green, pink and yellow is a very me color palette. So I guess it works. So at this point I had my niche and I had my little color palette and I just started drawing and I just drew and painted as much as I could. I think this was like 2019. So moving into 2020, obviously lockdown happened with COVID and I then was quite lucky in the sense that I had a bit more time to draw loads and loads and loads. I ended up focusing mainly on using gouache paint as a base and then using colour pencils for the lines which is exactly what I'm doing in this painting that you're watching. And yeah, that became my favourite way of making art. Obviously I'm not saying that that's exactly how you have to paint or draw or that's how you have to make art. It's just a matter of trying new things and if you like something, again like with drawing subject matter, if you like a specific type of medium then keep going with it and eventually you'll get really good at it. And obviously this doesn't work for everyone depending on your financial situation. My best advice would be, so if you want to buy a set of paints instead of buying like a full set right off the bat, maybe just choose a few complementary colours, white and then like a darker colour and you can create quite a lot of pieces out of just like what maybe four tubes, four or five tubes, which can be a hell of a lot cheaper than buying a full set. So by this point, the crucial thing was that I was in the habit of drawing and drawing to me was quite a normal part of my day, which like weirdly, even though I've always drawn and I have a degree in illustration, it really wasn't part of like my daily practice and it wasn't something that I was like, oh yeah, I can't wait to get home from work to draw. But during that time, I really got into the habit of it and I really enjoyed doing it. And it was something that I didn't need to think about or like force myself to do. I just wanted to do it. But of course, then what happened is that my art started feeling super stale and I was getting super unhappy with it. And I felt like I was just copying photos off Pinterest and not really adding anything of my own sort of flair to my paintings. So to counteract this, I decided to start trying to mix different reference photos together in finished paintings. So rather than just copying one reference photo, I kind of take the head of one reference photo and the body of another one and just kind of bosh them together, but then like sort of change them as well so it became something almost new and I found that this made my work feel a lot less stale and I was much happier with it and I was just keeping the sort of copying or the studies that I was doing to my sketchbook but I still wasn't completely happy and I still kind of felt like something was missing but I really didn't know what that thing was. So then what I did was I started looking quite closely at the work of artists that I really respected and admired. For example Audra or Claire again, still one of my favourites, and Lee Ellickson, who is just perfect in every way, shape and form. Now I'm obviously not telling you to copy artist work that you like, because of course that's a really shitty thing to do, unless you're using their work for study and you're not really sharing it with anyone and you're definitely not passing it off as your own. However, what you can do is you can look at their work critically and you can think to yourself, what exactly is it that I like about this? What exactly are the qualities that I think make this art good? What makes this a good piece that I like? And then what you can do is you can look at your own art and you can say to yourself, well, what if I add some of these elements that I like and I add them to my own work, but keep it in my own style? How would that look? So some examples of these elements are maybe texture, line weight, color, Maybe there's a specific way they put the paint down, like for example, our draw Claire is really, really painterly, whereas Lee Ellickson is quite rough and scratchy. So these are not things that are super specific to that artist. You're not taking like things that this artist is known for, just little like sort of general elements that you like and you think might be lacking in your own art. So I tried doing a few paintings with different bollo borrowed elements and there were some elements I liked and some I didn't like and eventually I found just a couple of little touches that I could adapt and make my own and this meant that I started to like my work a lot more. I also at this point started using colours that weren't pink, yellow and green which was pretty scary I have to admit but it does mean that the colours I use now are a lot more varied and yeah just prefer it a lot more. I remember the first time I used blue I was 
pooping my pants. <laughs> but it's all fine, I didn't die. So yeah, that's basically where I am now. That's a very whistle-stop tour of my journey through art. And like I said at the beginning, I still don't feel like I have a concrete style in inverted commas, but I definitely feel like I probably have more of a niche now. And I think my work is probably on the whole fairly identifiable as mine. I would definitely love to make my paintings a lot more stylized. I'm still trying to figure out how to give more of a deeper meaning to my work because I really want my work to stand for something and to mean something and to maybe raise awareness for something, but I'm really not sure how to get that across yet. And I'm very much in the process of finding my quote unquote style. And like I said, I really don't know anything about anything, so I'm really not in any position to be giving advice, but if I were to give you one piece of actual advice in this video, I would say just keep creating. Just keep doing what you enjoy and eventually a kind of style of something will emerge and you'll definitely improve at the same time, even if it doesn't feel like it. You need to keep on drawing or creating, you need to make good art make bad art which is almost more important than making good art is making bad art so if you feel like your art is bad this is what i always say to people if you think your art is bad it means that you know what good is so at some point you will get there but honestly i think the most important thing rather than having a style and i spoke about this in my social media video like a month ago more than looking at the algorithm and looking at social media likes and comments and all that stuff more important than anything is that you just enjoy what you do. Like any artistic endeavour, or endeavour in general, has so much more longevity if it makes you even a little bit happy while you're doing it, otherwise what's the point? So yeah, that's my story, still ongoing, still in the process, and that there are my general thoughts on if you want to find an art style, how you might be able to go about doing it, but like I said, I'm not an expert and I'm really no authority on this. But yeah, I hope this has been helpful or at least interesting to you. I hope the painting was at least nice to look at. <laughs> Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you like the video and comment down below if you have any advice at all on how to find your art style that I haven't mentioned because I would actually love to start a dialogue on this down below and see what everyone else thinks. And here's my shameless self-promotion. If you like this video, I'm also on Instagram, TikTok and Twitter. The links are in the description or you could just look for Nikki Durham. And if you'd like to support me in my art, I also have an Etsy shop where I sell stickers, prints and greetings cards. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're keeping safe and well and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!